It's Christ servants and assassin Troops stay shining Bussin' on you wizards so the troops stay kind It's Christ servants and assassin Troops stay shining Bussin' on you wizards so the troops stay kind It's Christ servants and assassin Troops stay shining Bussin' on you wizards so the troops stay kind It's Christ servants and assassin Troops stay shining Bussin' on you wizards so the troops stay climbing. What's up, y'all? Check one, two, one, two. Bear with me just a second while I try to share this to the groups. Almost done. Hopefully this works. We shall see. All right, welcome in, everybody. Appreciate it. Uh, Christ Servant of Assassin, episode number four. I certainly appreciate all the support. Uh, I want to give shouts out to uh, everybody who has uh, played a part in this so far. Of course, uh, Russell Fam, G1 Fam, Brother Joe, Caffeinated Assassin. Shouts out to Cross Culture, Cross Lower T Culture. Check them out on YouTube, Facebook, y'all. And so we're going to continue to drop a ton of content. Working hard, trying to get this uh, animation out. Uh, uh, Joe has got the first the first part of the animation kind of kind of dialed in and so we're gonna have some hilarious animation coming out We're gonna continue to bust out the original memes. We've got two new original memes coming out uh, Probably by tomorrow or the next day or two Original music Christ server verses. We're not gonna drop any of those this week, but uh, possibly next week. I'm recording them uh, uh, I got several of them recorded already. They're nice. They're hot. They're dope tracks. We don't we don't bump out that weak stuff at Christ Servative, we come strong. And so uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, get the word out. Um, I'm still having trouble with Facebook. Uh, as you know, as I shared last week, I, I uh, Brother Joe uh, screenshot the notification that told us that all our events are shut down for hate speech. And I'm still having trouble with Facebook. They, uh, I tried sharing content uh, over the last couple of days and they would not allow me to share content. Um, uh, would not allow me to share events. And so I don't know. I tried sharing the events. What's what's up guys. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, I see you there. So, uh, I'm not sure if uh, I was able to share it or not. And so we'll see. I sent it out. I didn't get a no. I don't know if I got a notification back yet or not, but, uh, they continue, uh, to try to shut me down and keep me from sharing content. What they're trying to do is they're trying to censor. That's what they do. They got the algorithms, you know, they got their supercomputer, you know, the beast that goes through and uh, picks up on certain words and terms and phrases. And uh, then it'll flag you is what they do to control content. You know, it's the satanic conspirators, you know, that are trying to shut down the truth. Uh, but the truth is always going to conquer, you know, in the end, the truth is always going to conquer. And so they're trying to censor. They're trying to con uh, control. But, you know, I came ready for a fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to uh, I'm just going to keep turning the screws on these people. And look, we'll win. You know, the truth is going to conquer. We will win. And, you know, they can try to control people, but the way they control people is with lies. And if you don't fall for the lies, if you don't fall for the BS, then you'll be immune to their control. And uh, so, you know, I'm not happy with Facebook. I'm not a fan. Let me try to do this really quick. Let's see if I'm trying a new thing so that the pictures don't uh, cover my face here. Let's see. Oh, that's weak sauce right there. Dang it. Anyways, you guys can see it right there. That's what I got to say about Facebook. Anyways, uh, let me see if I can take this down. All right. So uh, inside the belly of the beast again, you know, on enemy territory, using the enemy's resources to get the word out. And, you know, they're, they're going to continue to con try to control people. You know, their number one tactic, control tactic is to try to uh, cause, uh, cause you to fear, right? Uh, Shame you, cultural, social shame, threats, harassment, lost a job. But you know, I ain't worried about that. You know, the Bible says, you know, the righteous are as bold as a lion. Listen, if you ain't got nothing to hide, you ain't got nothing to worry about. What are they going to do? Dig up some old bones from my past? <laughs> like, so what? Like, I mean, if anybody been around me five seconds, you know that the word's out on me. You're not going to be able to pull up any new stuff on me. I mean, you can dig and pull all the bones out of the closet unless you have the, unless you have the ability to... Uh, uh, to plug into my brain and download the thoughts that have never made play, then you ain't got you, you then you're not going to get nothing on me. So I'm not worried about it. You know, I'm not going to cuck like, uh, you know, like Chick-fil-A, you know, Chick-fil-A They you know, they finally cowed down and cut to the queers. 
you know, they gave in, they waved the white flag. And so, uh, you know, it, it's not going to help them. It's going to hurt them in the end. You know, they got a lot of support from people. Christian people supported them, stood with them. And then they turned around and they uh, and then they turned around and they just cut. They cowed down to the fear, the fear tactics, and they lost. And you know what? If you cow down to the fear, then you're going to lose every time. But listen, if you don't, if you don't allow yourself to be, if you don't compromise with the insanity, then you won't lose. You'll continue to stand your ground. You can continue to stand bold for what's right. Uh, I'm talking, I'm not, not like Mario Lopez. You remember Mario Lopez um, came out and said that uh, trans children uh, is child abuse and they threatened to take his lollipop away and he cucked. And by the way, it's always a test. That's what they'll do. They'll test you to find out if you have any real true resolve or any real true conviction uh, uh, within yourself concerning the things that you that you uh, attempt to stand for. And they'll always test you. And the true test, of, the true test, listen, listen, we're, we're, we're men, not animals. And when the test comes, you can stand, you can stand and you can beat the test. You can overcome. If you don't, if you don't, if you just don't compromise, if you just don't go for the lollipops and the threats and all of that junk, you can stand, you can fight and you can win. And look, there's no fear here. I said it at the very first broadcast in Christ Servative. We don't fear. There's no fear. There's no despair. Yes, the, the whole world lieth in wickedness. That's true. It does. It lieth in wickedness. And there's a satanic conspiracy and it's, you know, it's being propagated all around us. But I ain't tripping and you neither should you be. I mean, just, you know, just stand with the truth, have a family, get married, have beautiful children, raise them for God. And listen, you will win. The truth is always going to conquer in the end. Don't let them intimidate you. Do you think I'm scared because Facebook is shutting down my events? I mean, some people are like, oh, no, oh my, oh, my. That's why, listen, I, I'll never accept one dime from anybody on any of these platforms. I know on YouTube, when you get enough people paying attention, you can do the super chats and you can start collecting the money and all that. And that's when they start trying to control you because this is what they do. They go in and they have all their conspirators start sending you $200 and $300 for a super chat. Next thing you know, you're pulling down a thousand or $2,000 a week or $3,000 a week. And then what they do is they come through and say, look, we're going to shut you down. If you don't change your message, if you don't cut, if you don't compromise and because they and because they because they like the hundred dollar bills that have been coming in, they just cut. They quit. They cower. They give in. As soon as they threaten to take the lollipop away, they give in and they quit and find out. And it's a test. And what you find out is that they really didn't have any resolve or any conviction. That's what they did to Mario Lopez. They said, look, you're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your money. We're going to shame you. We're going to humiliate you. And he said, all right. And you know what he did? He came out and apologized and said, oh, no, no, I was all wrong about that. What he should have did is he should have stood up and said, yes, that is child abuse. And I will not back off of my stance. And I don't care about the social shame. I don't care if you take the lollipop away, but I'm going to stand on the side of the truth. And listen, we got to get it nailed down. The truth will set you free. The truth will always conquer in the end. And so we got to get that. I mean, we got I mean, we got to have a conviction about it to resolve about it. And don't fall for the distractions either. I'm talking about how they type, try to control people that want to they'll want to get you pulled in to the uh, into the into their fear tactics. They'll try to intimidate you and they'll also try to distract you with all their slop and entertainment and pornography and all of the false narratives and all of that junk. But don't listen. I'm not falling for the slop and neither should you. Don't fall for the junk. Don't get distracted. Don't get swept up in their pornography. That'll bust your brain out and you won't be worth nothing. And that's what they try to do. Listen, it's not by accident that stuff's all over the place because they want to get you pulled into it. Because listen, if you get messed up and addicted to pornography, you won't be you won't be worth nothing in the cause of truth. Nothing. And of course, they'll try to divide and conquer. And that's what all this race baiting and social justice and identity politics is all about. It's all about dividing people. Feminism all about dividing people. And listen, you can try and set people against me and call me a racist, which people have, call me anti-Semitic, which people have, call me crazy, call me conspiratorial. And just because I won't dive to the bottom of your Cracker Jack box for the prize, but listen, the people that get it, they get it. And listen, I'm down with the community of people who get it and understand they're not gonna fall for the junk, who are not gonna cow down to fear and not be intimidated, not be distracted by all the slop and not allow their false narratives and their false junk and all their politicizing to divide people is junk. And listen, I'm not going to get caught up in the false binary where I either 
cow and cuck or anger and rage. That's junk. That's exactly what they want you to do. If they can't get you to cow down and cuck and just cash your chips in like a little wimp, what they'll do is they'll try to manipulate you through anger and rage. But don't do it. Don't fall for it. Let's just, hey, just enjoy life. Listen, not only is there no fear here, but there's no anger and rage here. Listen, we ain't mad at nobody but the devil. You know what I'm saying? There's no anger. There's no rage. We're just trying to enjoy life. I'm talking about faith, family. You know what I'm saying? Children, having a godly seed. And, you know, enjoying the community of faith, the community of people and the people that really get it and know what's going on. And listen, we win by not compromising with insanity. Looks like I got a comment here. Appreciate those of you who tuned in so far. Uh, Chechen Kolos, wifey, Sister Victoria, Abigail, what's up, y'all? You guys are all legend. Love you guys, all legends. And uh, so uh, anyways, um, don't go for the junk. Don't compromise with the insanity because that's what it is. It's just absolute insanity. Insanity. Don't compromise like Mario Lopez when he says, well, trans children, you know, that's child abuse. And he did the right thing, but then he cucked and cowed and he compromised with the insanity. This idea that children are trans, that's insanity. That's insane. And so don't fall for it. I mean, look what China did. You know, you... I don't know if you heard what happened with China and the NBA, but, you know, uh, the grabblers got angry at China because they could not control China's economic system to their satisfaction like they control ours here in America. So they manufactured their revolutions like they always do, the same way they pull that junk here in the U.S. Uh, and, you know, who used to who used to really rip the mask off of that junk was Andrew Breitbart. They killed him and been uh, been the little ship weasel ship Shapiro, the weasel. Uh, refuse to stand up and take a stand and get honest that they took Andrew Breitbart out because he's a little weasel and a coward and he's bought and paid for. But anyways, uh, he, uh, Andrew Breitbart used to go to these, uh, to these, um, what do they call them? These little protests and these protests were organized and funded by people like George Soros, the Rothschilds. They fund these things and they'd get people fill buses up with people with signs made, pre-made signs to go and protest, uh, cons quote unquote, conservative things. And they don't even know why they're out there. They're getting paid to be out there. And that's what's going on in China. It's all organized protest. It's all organized revolution because what they're trying to do is they're trying to manipulate and divide the Chinese people so they can control the economic system in China. And so what happened is they uh, the NBA busted out a little tweet and said, oh, well, you, we support Hong Kong and all this kind of stuff. And you know what China did? China said, Okay, America, we don't want you here no more. We don't want you here no more. You get out. No more money for you. And so the grabblers and, you know, the NBA that is owned by all the grabblers and all the, they're like, oh, my gosh, what about all of our billions of dollars? You can't do this. You know what China did? They said, listen, you want to talk crap about us? You're not allowed here no more. And what they did is they took down the NBA on all of their broadcasts. They took down, they started ripping down all of the promotions out of all, of all the promotions off of the side of their buildings and on their billboards and all that stuff. And they said, that's it. We don't want you here. You talk, you don't talk to us like that. You're out of here. We don't want you here. Bye. And so what happened? The grabblers and the NBA and LeBron James realized that they were going to lose the billions of dollars. So they got down on their hands and knees and they kissed China's little yellow feet. That's what they did. And the point I'm trying to make right now is China didn't compromise. They didn't allow, allow themselves to be bullied by the satanic conspirators. Now, listen, I'm not pro-China. Don't get me wrong. China is amoral, right? They're, you know, they're, uh, there's, a, there's a great underground sweep of Christian revival going on in China. But the, but the Chinese government and what they're propagating there, it's amoral. You know, they, they don't live in the upside down inverted world, but they're just kind of indifferent, you know, to moral things. And so I'm not pro-China. That's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is when they come and they try to bully you and try to make you cuck, don't bow down. Don't give in to that junk. And, you know, American conservative politicians are so weak and so pathetic and so compromised, and that's why they never win. They never win because this is what'll happen: is they'll is that is that they'll start, you know, they'll start trying to manipulate the conservative politicians with their with their fear tactics and their intimidation tactics, and you know what you know. For example, like in South Carolina with all the trans bathroom junk, 
They refuse to, they're trying to stand in the way of legislation for trans bathrooms. And so what happened is that all of the threats and all of them, well, this is what we're going to do. We're not going to, we're not going to play any more NBA games there. We're not going to play anymore now. So the conservative politicians said, well, this is what we'll do. You know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll kind of go along with it. We'll kind of bend a little bit here and all this kind of thing. It's, it's pathetic. And that's why American conservative politicians are so pathetic because they're so weak and they're so compromised. And that's why they never win. And that's why our political system is being ran over by these people because nobody wants to stand up to them. I mean, we could learn something from what China did and say, listen, you don't talk to me like that. You can get out of here. You can pack up your bone and get on because we don't want you here. But they won't do it because they're bought. Because listen, this is what happens. They'll say, well, you know what we're going to do? You know, we're, you know what we're going to do? Mr. Politician, we're going to take your lollipop away. Oh, no, don't take my lollipop away. And we're going to shame you. And we're going to embarrass you. And we're going to make people hate you. Oh, no, don't do that. And so they cuck like little cowards. Anyways, I still love hate speech, by the way. Let me show you something. And by the way, these people that are behind all of this, these George Soros types and uh Rockefeller tie. Let me see if I can let me see if I can do this. Let me share screen. I know it's not ideal, but I want to uh hold on. Application window. See if I get it right this time. Hey, I did it. So this is JD Rockefeller. This is one of the little weasels. I think he's dead now. And by the way, we're better off. Somebody should have ought to did a war dance when this guy died. He's so vile and so evil and so wicked. But J.D. Rockefeller, these are the people at the top of the ladder that are manipulating this. These are little pathetic, pathetic, pathetic weasels that are driving all this fear tactics and all this junk. These, and listen, the higher you go up the pyramid, the more pathetic these people get. And that's what they are. They're completely and utterly pathetic. Let me try. Let me show you uh, Soros here. Here we go. Yeah, so this is George Soros. Look at how disgusting and pathetic this guy is. This is the guy that's funding your Black Lives Matter movements. This is the guy that was funding the, the caravan that came up from South America. You think that those people just all got together and said, hey, let's migrate. That was all organized by this guy. Grabbler, billionaire that's behind much of the social divide in our nation. And look at this guy. He's a creep. He's a creep. And this is the guy. Look, the, the point I'm trying to make right now is you're going to allow yourself to be bullied by this guy. Not me. This guy. I mean, this guy is absolutely pathetic. Let me show you another one. Let's see if I can find this. Here we go. Here you go. Here's your Rothschild. These are the satanic conspirators, conspirators, the Kabbalah worshipers, the guys that are driving all of this fear and all this intimidation. Look how weak and how disgusting and how pathetic these people are. And yet people allow themselves to be bullied by these guys. Totally pathetic. Let me see if I can get this up right really quick because this, this, is, this is my sentiments right here. There we go. Facebook trying to shut me down. That's what I think about that. Anyways, so uh, tonight we're talking about, uh, you know, and, and and by the way, I still love hate speech. Facebook's trying to shut me down, but I'm not bending. I'm not compromising. I'm not going for it. And so I'm not, listen, if they shut my Facebook page down, so what? You think I'm going to, you think I'm going to sell out and compromise with their insanity because they're going to shut my Facebook page down? What are they going to do? Come and threaten me? And say, oh, oh, if you don't stop talking like that, uh, what, what we're going to do is we're going to blah, blah, blah. And we're going to tell them, you know, about all the terrible things that you did before. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. So pathetic. We're going to take your lollipop away. Go ahead. You guys can keep your lollipop. Anyways. And so uh, it might get a little intense tonight. The title of tonight's stream is uh, The Emasculation of America, The Cucked Pussycat Club. And by the way, if you guys have any questions or comments, just lay those down and I'll try to get them. And uh, I know we're down probably 
quite a bit of viewers from where we were last week, and that's because they're that's because they're ghosting the broadcast. They're not letting it get out. And uh, but listen, don't let that. I'm not going to let that rattle me. We're just going to keep pushing on. We're just going to keep turning the screws, and uh, we're not going to let that rattle us. And so uh, the emasculation of America. And so you know, I've watched over the past I don't know 15 or 20 years. I've been around a little while now, and I've watched over the past 15 or 20 years a shift where it has become trendy, you know, for men to act and dress like feminine little queers and while at the same time shunning maturity and responsibility. And, you know, I've watched a generation of quote unquote men grow up without the virtues of strength and masculinity and self-sacrifice and fortitude in the face of adversity, being, being leaders and protectors and providers and faithful and honorable and responsible with a real sense of duty and a, and a willingness to lay down their lives for women and children and freedom and country. And by the way, this is not by accident. This is all by design. This was all part of the satanic conspirator social programming. And look, there is a war on masculinity. There's a, there's, there's a war on masculinity and it's, it used to be less overt, but now it's just right in your face. And you know, any form of masculine behavior is becoming marginalized, ridiculed and shunned to be masculine in today's culture is tantamount to being abusive. And that's what they want you to believe. And if you're, if you're masculine or if you're raising your boys to be masculine, they want to say, oh, well, what you're doing is you're perpetuating gender stereotypes, which is harmful to people and all of that type of junk. And so we hear things about toxic masculinity. And that is simply the idea that biblical manhood is oppressive and abusive. I mean, they won't, some of them do, some of them will explain it in similar or close to those exact terms. But essentially what it is, is toxic masculinity is defined by adherence to traditional male gender roles. And, and w which includes an avoidance, uh, of, uh, of femininity, right? Or any sort of expression of feminine attributes. Have you heard say, well, you, you got, have you heard people say, well, what you got to do is you got to get in touch with your feminine side. Listen, fellas, you shouldn't have a feminine side. That doesn't mean that as a man, as a masculine, strong man, that you can't have a gentle side, that you can't be kind. That's not what that means. And so I think they're trying to Grab all the broadcast. Looks like I got a comment. Hey, what's up, Sister Kiara Legend? Thanks for tuning in. And so, uh, so masculinity is to perpetuate traditional gender, gender stereotypes. In other words, male biblical patriarchy, male leadership, tra training young boys to be strong men, masculine, with godly masculine virtues. Oh, that's bad. So they allege. But, you know, the exact opposite is actually the case to up to uphold biblical values. Concerning. Manhood and womanhood is considered to be sexist and chauvinist, misogynist. And if you do that, you're a homophobe or a transphobe and blah, blah, blah. That's what I'm talking about with all the cultural shame tactics. Right. If you say men ought to be men. Or boys will be boys because they play rough and they show uh, masculine virtues of strength. And, you know, they might be a little rough around the edges, that sort of, that sort of thing. But it, you know, if, if, you, if you propagate virtues of masculinity, you're accused of being sexist and chauvinist, and misogynist, that you're homophobe and transphobe and all this kind of stuff. By the way, I'm not a homophobe. I'm not afraid of queers. Listen, I'll look you in your beady little queer eyes. And tell you that you should stop sodomizing people and stop letting people sodomize you. I'll look you in your beady little lesbian eyes and say, listen, ladies, I'm sorry that your daddy was mean to you, but you ought not be doing that. Anyways. And I'm not, listen, transphobia, it's so stupid. I'm not afraid of trans people. I'll look a trans person in their little eyes, their beady little eyes and say, look, dude. Got to take that dress off and be a man like God created you to be. You know, uh, there's a feminist author named John Stoltenberg. He's the president of the Pussycat Club. 
And he says this, he says, all traditional notions of masculinity are toxic and ultimately reinforce the oppression of women. So, traditional, biblical virtues of masculinity, biblical manhood, guess what, is oppressive to women. That's exactly what feminists teach. That's exactly what they believe. The American Psychological Association says this, traditional masculinity, mas masculine ideology is associated with negative effects on mental, men mental and physical health. So this is what they want you to believe. They want you to believe that to have, maintain, teach, train our young boys to have masculine virtues is psycho is is a psychological detriment that it causes mental health issues and that's so stupid and you know the exact opposite is the case and so allegedly toxic masculinity leads to risky and or socially irresponsible behaviors including including substance abuse you know what they're saying that if you teach your boy to be a man that you're going to train him to be a drug addict isn't that so stupid and it says that toxic max masculinity teaches them the quote unquote toxic masculinity, which is really biblical manhood. If we train our boys in such a way that they'll grow up and be dysfunctional in relationships. But again, the exact opposite is actually the case. Instead, instead of uh, men growing up and learning how to be man, learning how to be men and expressing godly virtues of strength, masculinity and responsibility and a willingness to self-sacrifice and having fortitude in the face of adversity and all these sorts of things. Oh, but if we do that, what we're doing is we're messing kids' minds up. But the exact opposite is the case. Training young boys to grow up and be little effeminate queers is what messes their life up. And so listen, note it and note it well. When masculinity falls, when biblical manhood falls, a culture and a nation will fall. And look, there is a war on masculinity, and it is by virtue of social engineering. I'm talking about engineered consent or conformity by way of bad parenting. That's what they do. They, they socially engineer and inculcate these ideas into the minds of people where people grow up, men grow up, and they never learn how to be fathers. Holy crap. I think I'll just keep that hid. I thought it was going to be a lot colder out here tonight. <sighs> Anyways, so we got a whole generation. Remember we talked about mind control tactics, Tavistock, Strawberry Fields. And, you know, the boomers, the baby boomers were completely inculcated by all that slop. And so instead of having monogamous marriages and having children and raising children right and instilling godly virtues in, into them, they're dropping LSD, getting high, having sex in the back of cars. And now they're all grown up and they raised a generation of a bunch of losers. And then... They want a virtue signal and they say, well, our generation, we fought in wars and, you know, we have grit, right? Oh, really? Because the last time I checked, much of you guys were dropping LSD and sniffing cocaine and living immoral and neglecting children. And instead of raising them to be strong men and strong women. You allowed a culture, an entire generation to grow up, and they don't even know what it means to have instilled into them manly, godly, masculine virtue, and so on and so forth. And so, engineered consent, bad parenting, agenda-driven entertainment, pornography, video games, right? Education, PC privilege propaganda. That's all part of the same part and parcel of all the same junk, a deliberate political strategy by which they 
seek to intimidate men and tell you that traditional masculine virtues are oppressive to women, which is a lie. It's an absolute lie. Or they want to tell you that because you're a man, you have a distinct advantage in your life over and against women, which is a lie. And by the way, all of this does not negate personal responsibility. Just because you allowed yourself to be manipulated by the lollipop gang does not mean that you're not personally responsible. You know, and uh, so we got bad, vir bad, bad nurturing, absent fathers, single mothers or fathers that are there, but they're absent. They've checked out. They set their children in front of a TV set or, you know, they had children raised on Ritalin and Adderall. You know, their natural behavior being stifled through medication and all that junk. Intentional shaping of perceptions through, you know, disgusting education, training our boys to be little effeminate queers. No one is allowed to get their feelings hurt. No one's allowed to lose a game anymore. No male hierarchy, none of that. Further trying to make our boys like the color pink or play with dolls. Yes, that's what they're doing. They're saying now, you know, this, you know, these, you know, traditional gender roles and genderized behavior like boys playing with trucks and girls playing with dolls. Well, that's all wrong and that messes children's minds up. So what we need to do is we need to give our little boys baby dolls and teach them to like pink. I mean, it's disgusting and it's insane. It's insanity. That's why I say, listen, as long as you don't compromise with the insanity, you, you can fight and you can win. And so they try to intentionally shape the perceptions through this education. It's being taught in our schools, both in our government schools and our higher education. Being taught that gender is a social construct that has nothing to do with biology. And by the way, gender is not a social construct. Biology determines gender. Gender is completely binary. Gender roles are reinforced socially, but they're not constructed socially. Listen, if you're a man, you're a male. If you're a woman, you're a female. If you're a boy, you're a male. If you're a girl, you're a female. And it's really that simple. Now, you may not like that, but I don't care. So... And they got their fear tactics, right? All the Me Too movement, trying to shame men, trying to make men feel bad. They never did nothing. I never abused a woman. Listen, I don't need to hear that crap. I don't need somebody to try to guilt trip me. Listen, I never abused a woman. And I ain't going to let nobody guilt trip me about it. And all this social justice, gender studies, women's studies. The most pathetic thing in our higher institution of learning is all of these, the humanities are washed out by this junk. Listen, if you're taking gender studies, you got to get out of there. It's a bunch of slop garbage and it won't give you, it won't impart anything to your life that will give you one bit of utility to be able to function in a society. Same thing with women's studies, a bunch of slop, disgusting slop and all this PC junk, you know, the scourge of political correctness that has seeped into every facet of American life, and it's threatening to silence dissent. And that's what they do with all of their fear tactics and intimidation. They try to shame people and say, if you stand up for what is right, then you're a misogynist, you're a sexist, a homophobe, and all this junk. And it's causing our quote-unquote leaders to cower to this junk. And what it's doing is it's weakening masculinity. This is going on through our media where men are portrayed as immature, lazy, spineless, just kind of navigating through life by accident, incompetent, getting by with the help of a superior female. We see this in our modern entertainment, some of the most watched television programming in the history of our planet, The Simpsons. That's what they're trying to communicate, that fathers are bumbling in idiots like Homer Simpson or like South Park and many, many others that could be named, portraying fathers as inept idiots. And look, this is not by accident. Mm -mm. 
but rather as a result of mass programming designed to reduce power and confidence and true manliness. You know, it's a psychological warfare against masculinity designed to program a culture to think and believe that men are weak and pathetic and to further divide, divide men and women on social grounds. And so the strength of our culture is being threatened. And that's the point. That's precisely the point. As they're trying to weaken the infrastructure of our Western culture by attacking the very foundations of it. Listen, men in relation to women were created and designed by God to lead, to provide, and to protect. And I am an advocate of chivalry. Men should honor and respect and protect and provide for our women and for our children. And all of this social conditioning has created a generation of cucked little pussycat men who are not worth five cents in the demands of the real world. I'm talking about quote unquote men who do not have the virtues of self-sacrifice, who do not have the ability to overcome adversity in their life, who shun responsibility, that are not equipped to lead anybody, who will not protect and provide for our women and our children, and that is all by design. And so what we have is a feminizing of our boys through all of this mass programming entertainment leading to a lack of fathers and traditional male role models. Listen, I believe in the biblical virtues of manhood and I'll stand with them and with God as my helper, I will train my boys so that they will have those virtues instilled in them so they'll grow up to be responsible, mature, strong, masculine men who provide for and protect our women and by the way, I want to be part of a community of like-minded men. I want my boys to be able to look to the other men in my church and, and be able to see examples of godly virtue, godly masculine men. Listen, there's a reason why little effeminate men don't like me much. It might have something to do with the fact that I don't like them very much. Oh no, how dare you? Here we go. That don't mean I don't care about them. That means that I won't stand with and support a feminine little slop. Won't go for it. And listen, don't get it twisted. Listen, I believe that men should be bold and brokenhearted, strong, yet gentle, but not effeminate. You can have gentleness, and by the way, gentleness is a virtue, it's a fruit of the Spirit, and you can have gentleness without being effeminate. Effeminate does not equate, effeminacy does not equate to gentleness or kindness. It equates to effeminacy probably mispronounced that but anyways if you guys want to chime in feel free to I'll get to the comments eventually um and so what we have is a feminizing of our boys lack of fathers traditional male role models we have the privilege trap right oh man you just have it so much better than women so you ought to cuck and be little feminine wimps so you don't oppress women. That's what they're trying to do. And so all these, you know, the biblical, traditional virtues of masculinity are taking hits from all angles. And, you know, everybody wants to be a feminist, right, until the building's on fire. Oh, yeah, feminism. I'm a woman. And then the building's on fire or the boat's going down and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm just a girl. Anyways. And so, you know, I'm not going to fold. I'm just, listen, I'm not going to fold 
the right and necessary and biblical values to be strong and masculine and bold and cor courageous and protect and provide and lead. And that's what we need. And you know why our country's tanking is because the, we have raised a generation of men who do not have these virtues. And that's exactly the truth. And that's by design. It's not by accident. And listen, I'm not going to fold on it. I'm going to keep turning the screws on this thing. Because what we need is we need godly, masculine men with godly biblical virtue. That's right. Men that are masculine and strong, yet gentle, bold, courageous, protect and provide and lead. And you know, this is the measure of a man. And we ought to aim for it. Don't cuck to the little wimps. Listen, I showed you the picture of those pictures of those of those disgusting people earlier for a reason. Because these are the people that are trying to bully us. Weak, feeble, gross, disgusting, satanic little weasels. And so somebody's got to stand up and fight for godly biblical virtue. Somebody's got to stand up and say, listen, don't cuck. Don't be part of the lollipop gang. You know, when I was a man, I put away childish things. You know, you know the Bible says in Psalm 144 and verse 12 that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. And you know what that is? That's a picture of spiritual strength and maturity and depth of character. And so what is it that makes a man? What is it? What is it that makes a man a man? And look, this is why we need an authoritative standard. We need to allow God to define manhood for us and for our sons because if we allow manhood to be defined by our culture, we might as well just get on the rainbow train because we're gone. We're gone. If we're going to let those little pathetic weasels tell us what it is to be a man, that's it. Just jump in line at the rainbow parade because we're gone. We're done. We're finished. It's over. But I'm not going to do it. That our sons may be, may be as plants grown up in their youth. That means in their youth, young, exhibiting the godly and strong biblical virtues of strength and masculinity and responsibility and fortitude in the face of adversity and leadership and willingness to self-sacrifice and provide and protect. That's what we need. And that's what we've got away from. And so what is it that makes you a man? Hmm? It's not immorality. It's not having facial hair. It's not having a cool car. It's not having your own place to live. What is it? You can have all of that and still not be a man. Listen, some things are necessary but not sufficient. So what is it that makes you a man? So we got a question. Uh, I can't read that. I'm going to have to hide that. What would you say is the defining difference between a boy man who is not effeminate but quiet or gentle and one who is effeminate. Anybody with one good eyeball can see the difference in that. Listen, effeminate means like you act like a little queer, like a little girl. Don't have anything to do with being quiet and gentle. Keeping your peace and being quiet. Matter of fact, there's a, a tremendous amount of wisdom in being, keeping your peace and being slow to speak. And the multitude of words sin abounds. And so, you know, sometimes I wish I talked less and listened more. Still trying to develop that type of virtue in my life. But listen, being quiet. Let me get that back up. Uh, being quiet and gentle. Soft, being soft-spoken. Soft gentle and quiet. 
that don't have anything to do with the feminine. And listen, anybody can tell the difference. Anyways, so what is it that makes you a man? How about developing godly disciplines? How about being obedient to the word of God? How about having courage of convictions and not cowing down the first time they threaten to take your lollipop away? How about conquering your own lust? How about loving your wife? How about raising your children for God and providing for your family? How about taking personal responsibility for those whom God has placed into your care? How about overcoming adversity in your life and being a leader and a protector and a provider? How about being faithful and honorable and having a real sense of duty and willingness to lay down your life for the good of our women and our children? Listen, you can be gentle and still be bold. You can have a meek and quiet spirit and still be bold and be strong. The righteous are as bold as, as a lion. It doesn't have anything to do with just firing off at the mouth. It's not macho BS. That's not what masculinity is. Masculinity, godly biblical masculinity is exhibiting virtues of strength, of character and fortitude and strength in the face of adversity and being a leader and a protector and a provider of our women and our children. That's what it means to be a biblical man. That's what it means to be masculine, to dress like a man, to carry yourself like a man. Anyways, so men, be strong, be bold, be a leader and a protector of our women and our children. Be willing to sacrifice. Listen, you're not an animal and you're not a woman. You're a man. So act like a man. You know, God has given us the ability to stare down adversity and put forth the necessary sacrifice for the good of our nation and for the good of our women and for the good of our children and for the sake of our freedoms. And by the way, fellas, Women don't like sissies. Nope. Is that a news flash to you? Women don't like wimps. Matter of fact, women come to resent men who are wimps. Women don't respect, women, listen, if you're, if you're a little effeminate wimp, women will not respect you. Your wife won't respect you. Your daughters won't respect you. If you're not married and you don't have children, women won't respect you. And all of this feminist and lesbian junk is nothing more than bitterness and resentment flowing from a father who failed them, failed to love them and protect them. It's all a bunch of junk that is flows from a resentment and a hatred towards men and the irony of it all. And listen, if you're a lady out there and you're watching this, the irony of all this junk, all of this feminist women junk is that it does not produce the type of man that you desire. It does not produce the type of man that you can respect. It does the exact opposite. And so what happens is you get a whole generation of women who are just stuck in hell. Appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. <laughs> okay. So, Kier asked, would you consider Christian effeminate? Um, please clarify if you're talking about your husband or you're talking about a Christian. And uh, 
So anyway, I, you don't have to clarify. I'll just answer the question both ways. No, Christian is not a feminine. At all. And so if you've, been, if you've been picking up what I've been laying down for the last hour, then you know that that's not what is being communicated. That's not what, that's not as, what is being communicated whenever I speak of what it means to exhibit effeminacy. And so, uh, anyways. Oh, and Christian men, if they're... allowing themselves to grow into godly biblical virtues, the godly biblical virtues of manhood. There's nothing effeminate about that. Anyways, so isn't this the cra crazy irony of it all? Is that you got a whole movement, a whole perverted educational system, all of this engineered, social engineering through media and entertainment, all this kind of stuff, all this feminism, and you know what it's doing is it's producing a generation of men that women absolutely resent and despise and do not respect. And that's the irony of it all. So that's why they just become lesbians. It's insanity. Don't compromise with the insanity. And so they get stuck in an angry, resentful hell. By the way, there's hope. There's hope. By the way, what I'm doing is important and it's necessary. Somebody has to stand up and say it. You know what, what women really want is a man who is strong and masculine, self-sacrificing, serves, protects, provides, is responsible and loyal and faithful and honorable and accountable. And by the way, and respect is what men need from women. Yeah, <laughs> nobody, <laughs> nobody wants. Listen, the most, the most despicable thing imaginable is to be married to a woman who doesn't even respect you. And by the way, that's why all these grabblers hate everybody, is because they're such disgusting, effeminate little sodomite people that their own wives and daughters don't even respect them. And so they're stuck in hell. Anyways. Um, oh. And so I said what, what women really want. And by the way, Brother Christian exhibits all of these type of virtues. Strength, masculinity, self-sacrificing, servitude. He's a protector and a pro provider. He's responsible. He's loyal. He's faithful. He's honorable. He's accountable. That's what it means to be masculine. Right? Listen, I'm not saying I'm the prototype for masculinity. And if you ain't like an alpha dog that's firing off at the mouth 100 miles an hour, then you're not masculine. So don't misunderstand me. Thank God every man's not like me. Listen, God, listen, God gives us all our own gifts, right? My gift is just not that endearing to a lot of people. And so, and by the way, those virtues I just mentioned, this is our God-given and God-designed mission in life. This is woven into our being as men, and it should be reflected in our character. You know, we should be strong and masculine and self-sacrificing and responsible and loyal and protect and serve and be faithful and honorable and accountable and all these and all these things but this is exactly what the satanic conspirators are seeking to suppress and destroy and so boys from a young age are chastened and repressed and taught that their god-given masculine impulse is tyrannical and oppressive in other words masculinity has been pathologized, right? They want to they teach us that it's, that it's psychotic, that you're crazy if you're masculine. And then they look at me. That's what, that's what all the little feminine queer crowd will do is they'll look at me and they'll point at me and say, see, look at that guy, he's crazy. 
But I'm not crazy. I'm not unhinged. I just get it. That's all. And I'm trying to help other people get it. I'm trying to break some spells. So masculinity has been pathologized. And this so-called pathology is strategically designed to prevent boys from taking the necessary, necessary steps towards manhood. That's what it's all about. And so they want you to believe that socialization that tends to conformity to, to traditional masculinity, talking about biblical manhood, they want you to believe that it limit, limits male psychological development, that it constrains their behavior, you know. It keeps their little inner queer and their little feminine side from coming out. And so it and, and and thus it further results in gender role strain and gender role conflict. In other words, socialization that tends to conformity to traditional masculinity, what it does allegedly is it puts this strain on young boys, this gender strain and gender role conflict. And essentially what they're saying is they're saying, hey, you might not be a boy after all, you might be a little girl or you might be a little queer. This is what's going on in our culture. Don't teach boys to be men because after all, they might not be men. They might be little girls and they might be little queers. They might be just a little sodomite. And they want to say, I'm crazy. I'm pathological because I'm calling them crazy and I'm calling out their slop. I'm telling you, it's complete inversion. It's just reprobate insanity. It's the upside down world is what it is. And all of this supposedly negatively affects mental health, right? Training boys to be masculine men. They say is pathological. And it messes little boys minds up. But the exact opposite is actually the case. And so it's alleged that to tell children that God created them male and female with a specific role according to his design messes their minds up. If you train a boy to be a man, you know, a self-sacrificing protector and provider concerning women and children, you mess their mind up. Allegedly. But I'm telling you, it's the upside down world. It's a complete inversion. Everything, it's taking, a, it's taking the mind of a culture and flipping it completely on its head. And so then, what they want you to believe is to the extent that we are successful in indoctrinating our boys with traditional masculine ideals, what we'll, what we'll be doing, this is what they want you to believe, that what we'll be doing is we'll be raising a generation of tyrannical oppressors. Right? Total inversion. The, act, the exact opposite is actually the case. Listen. This is what they don't want you to know. This is why they want to shut me down on Facebook. This is why they're ghosting my channel. They're ghosting. They're not allowing me to share the event. I think they allowed me to put the invites out today to my friends list, but that's it. If you're not on my friends list, they're, 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 they're ghosting my videos all over the place because the algorithms already picked me up. I'm just getting started. The algorithms already picked me up because I'm turning the screws on this junk. They want you to live in the upside down. They want you to give your children hormone blockers and raise your little boys to be little, little girls. But listen. This is why they don't want you to hear. This is why they're trying to shut me down. Is when, when men fail to be men, an entire culture is driven into bondage. And by the way, that's the point. That's exactly the point. And here's the thing. The women and the children suffer for it. That's the whole point. And so... The truth is, is that masculine virtues are necessary to hold a culture together. A sense of duty and responsibility and self-sacrifice, pro providers and protectors. This is the cornerstone of our Western civilization. 
and it has produced the freedoms that we enjoy. Feminism is disgusting and it does not produce the type of man that, that men really want, but it actually destroys it. And that's the irony of the whole thing. Feminism, listen, ladies, feminism does not produce what you want, but it, it will destroy what you want. Feminism is a result of fathers who have failed, abused children, abandoned children, stuffing our children in government educational systems and daycare centers to be raised by somebody else. And listen, what we need is a grassroots revival of biblical fatherhood and manhood, strong male biblical role models across the board, not feminine or sleazy little immoral porno watching retards. And by the way, that's about what we have left. PC privilege propaganda is satanic and disgusting. Teaching boys from a young age that they have certain privilege over girls and such privilege is oppressive to them. What it does is it destroys both boys and girls. It destroys both manhood and womanhood. And that's the point. And so what is required of men in order to free and liberate women and properly nurture children and what tends to the joy and happiness and fruitfulness and fulfillment of our women and children, I'm talking about the strong virtues of masculinity and self-sacrifice and overcomers of adversity and leaders, providers, protectors, faithful, honorable, responsible men with a real sense of duty and a willingness to lay down the lives for our children. That is what is required to free and liberate our women. And that is what tends to their joy and their happiness and their fulfillment and their fruitfulness. But what we are taught through this satanic inversion and social conditioning and programming is that all of these godly, biblical, masculine virtues are actually what oppresses women and is actually what messes up the minds of our children. And it's total insanity. And so this war on masculinity is purposely It's like I got another comment. I'll read it in a minute. This war on masculinity is purposely and strategically designed and perpetuated by the globalist satanic conspirators because what they know, and listen good, is that real men will fight to protect their women and children and freedom and nation. So if they can cuck the men of a nation, a whole nation will go down. And that's what they know. And that's the whole point. So they aim to destroy biblical fatherhood by which they can destroy biblical manhood and in turn swing back around to further destroy biblical fatherhood and around the merry-go-round we go. And they use every platform of our society to advance their propaganda, media, education, entertainment, pornography, politics, religion, and so on. And this satanic movement is dedicated to destroying the biological distinction between genders, simple biology, basic biology is being overtaken by absolute insanity. And so now we got a culture that is confused about who's a boy and who's a girl. But listen, Gender is determined by our biology. It is binary. It is not a spectrum. There are only two genders. If you're a boy or a man, you're a male. If you're a girl or a woman, you're a female. And that is that, my friends. And so we have the removal of fathers, the destruction of manhood, sex, sexual and gender confusion, PC privilege propaganda, the feminization of education and culture, all to the end of emasculating the men to the destruction and takeover of our nation. And that's the point. 
So comment. I was just remembering the other day how recent just the term teenager is. I believe it brings division between generations and distances young people from actually stepping into being an adult, i.e. young men. And that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Teenager is a propaganda word introduced by the British invasion and the sexual revolution. Listen, we've all used it. But listen, there's a lot of wisdom in that comment right there. I'll read it again. I was, I was just reminding the other day how recent, how, how, how recent just the, the term teenager is. I believe it brings division between generations, then since young people from actually stepping into being an adult, i.e. men. That's exactly right, and that's the point. And so, here's the thing, and this is the point, and this is what we've been driving to, is that an oppressive and tyrannical society can only be founded once the men have been neutered. That's the whole point. That is the whole point. You see, biblical manhood, masculinity, masculine virtues is extremely detrimental to an oppressive regimen. And listen, here's the thing, is that men will fight against tyranny. They will fight to protect their women and their children and their freedoms and their nation. But the cucked little pussycat club will not fight. Cucked men are not men and they will not fight. And that's what they know. And so American men have been neutered spiritually. And by the way, what is going on physically? All the outward expressions of effeminity. Probably said that wrong again. All these outward expressions of effeminacy. Maybe I got it right that time. Are just an extension of what is actually going on in the spiritual dimension. And American men have become so neutered spiritually to the point that we've become such wimps that the sodomites are running our nation. Our women are ruling over us. We are cowering to the nations of this world. We are forsaking the faith of our fathers. We are abandoning that which made us strong. And the biblical concept of manhood has been almost completely washed out of the minds of the American people. And all of this is strategically designed to break our society down so the globalist satanic revolutionaries can advance their satanic globalist agenda. agenda. And so what do we have? Emasculated males, disgruntled, anxious, increasingly bitter and resentful and angry women who do not respect them, a confused culture and nation that is headed down. So what do we do? Listen, there's no fear here. Mm -mm. What do we do? Don't compromise with the insanity. Get married, have children, have a godly seed, Enjoy your wife, enjoy your family, faith, family, community. Get plugged into a community of people who get it. Chivalry, masculinity. Don't cuck, don't cow down. Don't be a little wimp. Be strong. Be masculine. Be self sacrificing. Overcomers of adversity, leaders, protectors, providers. Faithful, honorable, responsible men with a real sense of duty and willingness to lay down our lives for our women, for our children, for our nation, and for our freedoms. Listen, the truth is always going to conquer on the in, in the end. So don't compromise with the lie. Listen, we win. We win when we stand with the truth. We win by not compromising with the insanity. Faith, family, 
the freedom of the truth, children, a godly seed, Christian community. That's how we win. Listen, I'm not wringing my hands. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Nope. I'm just going to enjoy my family, continue to have children, raise a godly seed, enjoy the community of the brethren. Don't, don't compromise, but stand with the truth, not give in to the insanity, and enjoy life. Listen, my family's not going down. And yours doesn't have to go down either. And that's it. Sola Deo Gloria. Christ Servative. Out. It's Christ Servative Assassin. Truth stay shining. Busting on you wizards so the truth stay kind. It's Christ Servative Assassin. Truth stay shining. Busting on you wizards so the truth stay kind. It's Christ Servative Assassin. Truth stay shining. Busting on you wizards so the truth stay kind. It's Christ Servative Assassin. Truth stay shining. Busting on you wizards so the truth stay climbing.